Thank you very much, fellow Kenyans. Good afternoon, my students. Today, uh, we will proceed with our lesson, as usual. And uh, the main reason why we are taking these lessons is so that we can help our students uh, in high school, so that we can help our candidates to ensure that they pass their KCC examination so that they can proceed to the university level. That's why we will proceed doing our uh, our lessons, irrespective of any other uh, challenges that uh, people are having. First, I must take this opportunity to uh, apologize on behalf of the students who are not in a position to access our lessons. And uh, kindly enjoy this lesson. Today's lesson is on uh, chemistry practicals. That's why you can see uh, how I've uh, decided to put on. Uh, chemistry practicals involves uh, use of uh, different reagents, basically solutions. So we will work on uh, titration. <coughs> in uh, chemistry there are various analyses. Today we want to analyze. Uh, uh, and in chemistry we have various analyses. The first analysis we have is qualitative analysis, not qualitative analysis. Qualitative analysis. The next analysis that we have is quantitative analysis. Another analysis that we have is uh, electrochemical analysis and volumetric analysis. <coughs> Today we will deal with volumetric analysis, which is titration. And in titration, uh, today we'll handle three uh, different types of titrations, two of which shall uh, deal with neutralization reaction, that is a reaction between acid and a base. And then we'll also, uh, two of the practicals will involve neutralization reactions, reaction. Then again we will deal with redox reaction. So in our uh, practicals, we have various apparatus, and uh, these apparatus, before I proceed there, we will be handling this lesson with uh, uh, teacher Gishui. Uh, uh, Mr. Gishui and myself will do the practicals, and uh, we are here with them. So uh, during the practicals, we have different uh, apparatus that we use. So the first apparatus that we have uh, here is a volumetric flask. The volumetric flask is where we mix our solution and measure 250 milliliters of the solution to where the mark is. Then this is where after that, we, after measuring, we put them in different containers. As you can see, we have various acids, we have various chemicals here, as uh, you can see. Uh, another apparatus that we have is the conical flask. This is where we will be mixing our solutions in the conical flask. Then we have uh, uh, a pipette or a pipette. So the solution that is in the pipette is called the analyte. The solution that we'll be using in the, in the, in the pipette is called the analyte. While here we have the, uh, uh, the pipette sucker. So the pipette sucker, we have various areas in the pipette sucker. Uh, here is basically to release. When you want to release air from the pipette, you press up here and then simultaneously you press them together. You release the air once you connect it to the pipette. You connect it to the, to the pipette or pipette depending on where you come from. So you release it from using that. You release the air, then you can squeeze it like that. Then we have this part. This part is used for filling. For filling, you put the pipette in the solution, the pipette in the solution, then you press here. The solution will come up, up to the mark. This is, this mark on the, on the pipette is what will tell us that we've already filled the 25 milliliters of a solution. And that solution is called the analyte. Uh, and then there's also this part of the, pipe, of the pipette sucker. This is used to release the solution in the conical flask. You release the solution in the conical flask. So after that, we have our burette. So as you can see, our burette, burette is normally put on a, uh, on a clamp. A clamp is here, then we have a stand. So you put it firmly on a clamp. You ensure that you don't break uh, uh, the instrument. You don't break the, uh, the burette. So the burette is calibrated from zero to 50. So the cal calibrations is from 0 to 50. Then you fill the burette using a funnel. We have a funnel here. When you are filling the burette, 
you may you don't ensure that the funnel let the funnel not get uh, uh, directly into the let it be direct but at least you lift it, you lift it slightly up when you lift it slightly up this one will be allowing the atmospheric pressure to allow the filling of the burette using the uh, the funnel then after that we have a tap this tap when you fill this uh, uh, burette uh, your solution and the solution in the burette is called the the titrant solution in the burette is called the titrant so the titrant here will reach at this level of the tap so you release it a little bit you open the tap so when you open the tap you shall have released uh, uh, part of the chemical so that the burette is filled then you close it you don't close it so tight just ensure that it is firm not tight then when you are reading uh, all the apparatus that is the the burette the pipette when you are reading it ensure that you read it perpendicularly read it perpendicularly so ensure that uh, uh, the reading you don't read it from up don't read it from down but read it at the eye level that is what we call perpendicularly and then you read the bottom of the meniscus whatever is here which is the titrant you read it at the bottom of the meniscus i will show you how we will deal with it uh, why do we read at the bottom of the meniscus because that is the level of the titrant that is where it is so uh, that one when you read it perpendicularly you avoid certain errors error due to uh, parallax so from there i will take this uh, we have our tile our white tile also from there we'll take this opportunity to introduce mr gishui to take us through then uh, i will just be here again to uh, assist him as uh, as part of your teacher welcome uh, thank you yes uh, once again we are today on our lesson continuing with the iterations as uh, mr has said uh, it is part of the analysis in chemistry, as he has very well uh, put it. So today, it is a continuation of titrations, which we refer to as volumetric, volumetric analysis. Uh, the reason why we are calling it volumetric is because we are dealing with the volumes. We take a solution, a solution A, we combine it with a solution B to give us the products. To give us the products. Now in this case, when we take a solution A, as you have noted, we, if we know the volume of that solution, and we know, and how do we know the volume? By use of apparatus that have fixed volumes, like the pipette. And our pipette for today is 25 ml. So if we know the volume of solution A, and we know its molality or simply the concentration it's very very possible for us now to uh, to react with b using the apparatus that we have seen say a burette so that we get our product so in this case we'll get the volume and from there we can get the morality or the concentration because we know that now what we are saying in this case is that how do we know that these two have reacted we do that by use of indicators indicators now these are chemicals these are chemicals that show different colors in an acid and different but definite colors in uh, a, a, a base and an acid. And these ones are called indicators. Those ones that we buy, they are simply called commercial, commercial indicators. And examples of 
commercial indicators, we have very many indicators in chemistry. One of them is methyl orange, and we shall use it today. This is methyl orange. Another one that we use in chemistry, and we shall use it today, is phenolphthalein. Another one that we have in chemistry is bromo dimo blue. We are not going to use it today, and it is not very common in this. We still have another one that we call screened methyl orange. We are not going to use it today, and we still have another one. When we are dealing with the redox titrations, we still have another one, diphenyl. Diphenyl amine. This is especially when you are dealing with potassium dichromate. We use that indicator. So all of these indicators, they tell us they tell us whether a reaction is over or not. When we start with an acid and we are combining it with a base, then to get a salt and water, you realize that most acids are colorless. Most acids are colorless. Like we have HCl here today. So we are going to use HCl here today. Then we are combining it with a base, say sodium hydroxide. Or we can use sodium carbonate. If you look at those two, again, you notice it is colorless also. Even sulfuric acid is colorless. Even sodium hydroxide. So oh, most of these solutions are colors. So how do we know when we mix the two that a reaction is over? We use indicators. Because when we are in an acid, the color for the indicator is different. So when all the acid has reacted, then any extra drop in the acid will make the color of the indicator be different. In this case, when that time comes when a reaction A combining with B, when the indicator changes the color, the reaction or the reaction is complete. The reaction is complete. And when the reaction is complete, then we say that that is the end point. And this point is also called the equivalence point. So this is the point at which A has completely reacted with B. So today we are going to start with number one, neutralization reactions. Reactions. We are going to take an acid, we combine it with a base to give us a salt and water. Then we will take an acid also and we take a carbonate. And that is where now we are going to start. We are going to allow Mueshimiwa to take the acid HCl and place it in a burette. And then we titrate against sodium carbonate. So the sodium carbonate will be in the pipette while the HCl will be in the uh, burette. So we want to see now uh, Mueshmiwa doing the experiment. He will put uh, he will put 
the acid. And the acid in this case is HCl. First, he cramps the burette. Let us see how it, it should be done. Remind them the graduations facing you. So you place your conical flask, then uh, place your burette just slightly at the tip of the conical flask. Then the graduation should face you as you are doing your practical. The graduation on the uh, on the burette. Graduations are the marks, are the the marking. So. Ensure that it is firm, not too tight because you may break the apparatus. That's that's fair. Then after that, at least it can slightly move. Okay, good. Then after that you fill it using the HCL. Be careful with the acid because it is very corrosive. So You lift the funnel slightly up so that you allow the atmospheric pressure to fill it. Oh, okay. It's okay. Then after that class, you release because as we can see, We have our burette, then this burette is filled up to this level where the tap is. Then you release, uh, uh, you release some of the, uh, the titrant, which is inside the burette. You release it a little bit so that it, you fill the whole burette. So I will release it. I will release it here. Uh, we don't have a lab. This is a makeshift. Yes. Like so. So so this way we have a, you can improvise. Very necessary to improvise. Okay. Then after releasing that to ensure this is firm. So back back to you, Mwalimu. Yes, then from there, uh, you ensure that your conical flask has nothing, then Moshimiwa will pipette. Moshimiwa will pipette the base, that is sodium carbonate. You open the sodium carbonate. And then the indicator is methyl orange. So from here, kindly release the air. So what we did first is to clean all our apparatus with the uh, uh, distilled water. Then after that, just press here on the on the pipette to release the air remove the airlock then you put the pipette inside the sodium carbonate then you hold it from here then you press this part of the pipette to fill it to suck So you press it so hard, you'll find that you'll be using a little force, so you need to eat so much ugali or nyoyo. Nyoyo is gideri in my uh, language. Or mokimo. Yeah. So you feel it. When you see that it's taking some little time, again release here. Then you press simultaneously. Then again. You refill it, you fill it, you press hard, use a little energy. Make sure you pass uh, the mark, then after that release up to the mark. You release up to the mark, and then you make sure you read it perpendicularly. So ensure that you are careful when handling this, so you release using this side of the pipette, slowly. 
then you read the bottom of the meniscus there you go so that's our 25 milliliters then after that in a clean conical flask you release so you just press it you release it inside the conical flask Then note that we will be adding an indicator. Why did we choose methyl orange in this case? A strong acid and a strong acid we can use any indicator. I say that again. A strong acid reacted with a strong base, any indicator would work. But a strong acid with a weak base, we use methyl orange. It is the most appropriate uh, 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 indicator yes so before you put your indicator you'll, you'll realize that your pipette has some solution remaining so ensure that you don't because when you press it you, sh you shall have released everything so just knock the tip of the knock the tip of the pipette along the uh, on the flask on the conical flask then after that you don't worry about th about the solution remaining because it has been taken care of. So here you put uh, two to three yeah, in drops. In our case, we put uh, two drops. So you put two drops. That is uh, first drop, second drop. So class, you now see what uh, uh, Moshima has done. We have a different color here. So when this color changes, but after learning from the burette, then we will have the end point. Now, in this case, how do we record that? We record our readings, our values in titrations in a table, tabular form. The table here, you will realize that we have from the burette, from the burette, we have the reading that we have today, the, what he is starting with, that is the initial. Initial, and this one's initial burette reading in centimeters cubic. And read for me. Uh, here we have uh, 1.5678. 1 1.8 ml. Uh -huh. 1.8. And when you are doing it in class, you do it in pairs to help your skills. So like what he has done, then I would go, if you are working together in class, the way you should do, then if you have said it is 1.8, you don't believe him, you don't trust him, you now confirm, you confirm. And uh, uh, this one I have confirmed, it is 1.8. But in case you find it is, that solution, this is, it is in between here. You can approximate that one to the nearest, uh, I mean, to five or to zero, to the nearest five or zero. So that reading could have been either 1.80 or 1.85, but cannot be 1.82 or 1. Point. So the second decimal point, note in, in titrations, we always give to one or two decimal places. Now, if, uh, 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 if it is in the second decimal place, this one should either be a zero or a five. But cannot, this one cannot be a two, a three. For instance, we can talk of 1.80, 1.85, but we cannot have 1.86, for instance. This will be wrong. So in my initial, before he even starts, I indicate here 1.8. You can have one decimal place, but if I like, like in my case, allow me to use 1.80. Then uh, we allow him to learn and we see. So from here, you notice that we have a different color here. Uh, so let's run it, we see. I want you to look at what's happening here. So you run as you shake it. You release as you shake. So, you 
you notice that there's some color change, a little color change. It's turning to a different color, which is pink. There's no color like pinkish, so it is pink. So you notice there is so, a change. That is what we'd be expecting. So there's a change that is coming in. So from there, if you notice that the ch change is becoming conspicuous, you just release that, release the release the tap in uh, to release the droplets, not just as a as a whole, just droplets. Until you get the full color, what to expect is pink, as you can see. So, so this is okay. Now so you can now see we have this. Let us read, make the readings. So our reading here is uh, 29 point, uh, 2. 29 2. Remember to be very careful. 29.2, if you are in pairs, you confirm. Twenty nine point two five. Twenty nine point two. So twenty nine point two five according to me. So let us use mine. So this is the first that exercise. We said that what is here is a titan. So what we have here is a titan. And the process is therefore titration. This one from the uh, burette is a tight sand and we are analyzing what is in the conical flask from the pipette which is the analyte so we do the subtraction this gives us 5 this 12 minus 8 is 4 this is 8 we, ca uh, we carried 1 this is 7 27.45 27.45 27 now in this case Assuming we need to take another tighter, that is the second one. Now here there is, there is something that you must realize, that our burette goes all the way up to 50. So it, assuming the next one we take 27, 27.45 uh, plus another one, 27.45, this gives us 0, 9, 4, and this is 50. So 54.90. And our burette, as you are told by Mwashiniwa, is at 50. So we cannot use this one as our initial. So we take our solution, the acid, and fill. The acid and then put it in the burette so that we, we carry out another tighter. We you want refill. to carry another tighter so that we are consistent. So this is what we are calling tighter. Titers. Titrant reacting with the analyte. From the burette, titrant. From the pipette, analyte. And therefore, what we get here is a tighter. And the process, once we repeat that, we get another second tighter. So this process is therefore also called titration. So we again allow what so much more right there. Beaten. Do away with the first uh, solution, and then you rinse. It's okay. Rinse your conical flask. Then again, use your pipette. Get another solution of sodium carbonate.
Hii hmm. nataka ugali kweli. <laughs> This should take you at least just a minute. Then after that you release it up to where the mark is good so release it inside the conical flask or if you want to go if you want it to go faster you remove the pip the pipette sucker so that uh, the atmospheric pressure can act on it The, the pipette filler. Once again, when it starts doing that, you just tap the sides of the flask. So we'll move a little bit faster to save time. Then before that we read our initial value. Our initial value is 2.5. In two decimal places is 2.50. Then again we release it. 2.2.50. So our estimation should be around uh, what we should be getting is around 27. So if you add 27 to 2.5, so we'll release it up to around uh, 29 there. 29.95 which is around 20, 30 so, so you just release 20. it up to around uh, 20. 20 and then we start going slowly oh two uh, drops of the indicator okay okay then release uh, th those mistakes are common in, in cars where you forget the indicator. In case you forget, how do you remember? When you see there are no changes, that your solution is again colorless, note that there is a mistake you've done. So you don't move, don't move, uh, 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 don't continue. But again, don't panic. If that happens, then you continue. So you release it slowly just on droplets, there, there you go. Read. So here we have uh, 29.5. So our, our readings here is uh, 29.5. So that gives us uh, what? Uh, hmm. Seven. Mm. Two. Twenty-seven point zero zero. So you can see from here that uh, there is a, a very great difference. Meaning, we need to be uh, more accurate. So if you find you are differing by this margin, then it is important that you put you go. Uh, you check a third tighter. A third tighter will mean you rinse. You don't have to rinse. Just end it and I. Okay. So we work with it like that. We suck again for our third tighter. So we are going to refill. If we start from here, we say 27. We add to what we have now. That will be 54. So we we'll need to add. Okay. Uh, so we need to uh, use the burette volumes. We adjust the burette volumes so that our initial will accommodate something to do with 27. The 
and we get sodium carbonate. The initial reading is about 6.00. Then you don't forget your indicator. So two drops. It's a six, huh? So just release it to around uh, 30. 30. That is a drop by drop. Now after that you release it drop by drop. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh, 33. Oh, sweet, sweet, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, reading there. This thirty-three point one. But three point one zero. This is zero one. 27. So you can see these two values, they are very close. They are within 0 0.1 difference, unlike this other one. So in, in other words, this our reading, this our initial reading was very inaccurate. So in this case, you only average. Here you average, you average the volumes, the volumes within plus or minus 0 0.2. So the one that are within that is this and that. Now where do we move from there? From there we now work out what that one means. What is the interpretation? We have our sodium carbonate. We are combining it with hydrochloric acid. This gives us sodium chloride plus water, plus CO2. Then state symbols. This is a solution. This is another solution. This is a solution. This is a liquid, and that is a gas. Then you balance it up. In balancing, we get that. We get that. Now from there, we are saying we have our readings. The first one was 
0.25. The other one was 27.00. Then the other one was 27.10. So these readings, we cannot average the three. We can only average this one and this one. So the average reading is 27.0 plus 27.10. And because there are two, we divide by two. Now in this case, we are going to get 27.05. Now this is centimeters cubic. So we have our equation and this is now where we come in. When you are doing your titrations, nothing changes. This is what is was in the burette. No, this was in the pipette. And this one was in the burette. So you have the two written like that. The solution in the burette and the solution in the pipette. What was in the burette? The average reading. So the volume here is 27.05. The volume here from the pipette is 25. Now, this is your practical is over. What is remaining now is the mathematics and the question the examiner will ask you. For instance, in this case, if we knew the morality here, the morality, let's say, in this my case, was given as zero uh, for the acid, was 0 0.11 molar. This was HCl. So the morality here is what we don't have. Remember previously, we worked out this one in different ways. And one of them was MAVA over MBVB giving us A over B. Now, our morality here for this one, take this one to be your A, this one to be your B. Doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. So this is, this is morality is 0 0.11 times volume is 27.05. All this, we divide it by morality of B times the volume of B would give us A is the more ratio. This is 1 over 2. So cross multiplication gives me that this is 0 0.11 times 27.05, this one, times 2. All this divided by 25. That will give me morality of my B, which happens, the one that was in the burette, that is the morality of sodium carbonate. Just use your calculator. Just use your calculator and work out that one. That one you can easily work out and so on. So that is one question the examiner may ask you. The examiner may ask you to get the morality of a solution that is not known. A solution whose a solution whose concentration is known is called a standard, a standard solution. That it is known, known concentration. Now, if you have one that you don't know, now the process of looking for the concentration is called standardizing. So in this case, in our case for the sodium carbonate, we have standardized sodium carbonate. I say that one again, class. We are saying a solution whose concentration is known is called a standard solution. 
So, the concentration of the acid was given to us and that made it a standard solution in this case. Now, the solution that we don't know its concentration was sodium carbonate. We have used the volumes, the titrations to determine the concentration and uh, therefore we have standardized. That is one question you could be given. The same question could be given like this. The examiner could give you a carbonate that is not known and you are combining it with HCl. Meaning he has given you the formula of the carbonate. And in this case, he has told you that this carbonate, we dissolved. You dissolve 5.3 grams of the X carbonate in water and make it to 500 ml mark. So in our case, we were using a 250 ml flask. Now, we could be given the same question, but differently. Now, in this case, we are saying 5.3 grams dissolved in 500 ml. And we are reacting it, we are reacting it with HCl. So what would be the equation? X combining with this, XCl. Looking at this, this tells me that the charge of X is 1, is monovalent, plus water, plus CO2. So if I balance my equation, that is what I get. So this is what, uh, this is what is in the burette. This is what is uh, in the burette. Let us now have burette here. And let us have pipette here. My volumes in the burette uh, would be, uh, let's say, here I take 27, 26.7. 26.7, 26.7. So what is the exercise here? The examiner is now interested in working out this. We work out the mass of this. After we work out the mass of this, we will get the mass of x. So whatever, uh, these are theoretical values. So in this case, I got 26.7, 26.7. So I will average all of them. And therefore the volume in the burette is 26.7 centimeters cubic. The volume in the pipette has not changed. This is 25.0 centimeters cubic. What other information was I given? If I know the mass that was here and I know uh, I know the mass that is here and I know something to do with the, let's, let's take the morality of one of them. And this one could be 0 0.187 moles per liter or simply molar. So with this information, I can work out this in an exam. You don't have to know the carbonate. So what do I need to do? Here, I will have to use the same formula that we, we talked about. MAVA over MBVB, and this is A over B. So, morality here of the first one is what I don't have. The first one is here. I don't have this, so I can work it out but I have everything for this other area. So this is what I'll do. MA is not known. Volume is 
confirm 26.7 so you divide this by 0 0.187 times the morality uh, the volume here was 25 the first one was this carbonate so 1 over 2 so here is 1 over 2 so again class it is very very simple for you to work out that it's a matter of cross multiplication and you are home and dry uh, this is 0 0.187 times 25 divided by 26.7 times 2 you get the molality of whatever you didn't have which was the base that is the next question the same examiner the same examiner may give you another question and this question is you take a carbonate you react it with an acid say hcl then you will get a salt plus water plus co2 and then that is what you then this acid you are given some solid this is so solid then you are told to put it in an acid and stir then you are told from there you take the the solution so formed in this case it is the excess acid then you take the excess and add water to it this one you dilute a bit then whatever you get here you know this is diluted hcl so this is the same question class where you are taking now a carbonate reacting with an acid then the excess acid you take you fetch 100 say you dilute with water then you titrate using sodium hydroxide so the titration is not all this the titration is this part but once you work out this titration you know the morality of this and the volume from the pipette then this becomes the burette reading you can get the concentration of hcl this concentration you had this concentration was of the dilute one so you can get the, the concentration of the acid that was not dilute and you will get the moles those are the moles that was in excess now those moles that were in excess were the ones that reacted so you subtract from here you get the ones that reacted with the carbonate and that process where we are working back is what some books would want to scare you by calling it back titration now before we work out a question on back titration i want to invite uh, our MP here to take another reaction of a direct a direct neutralization direct neutralization direct titration that doesn't involve a lot of working this is where we are going to take an acid and this is sulfuric acid we combine it with sodium hydroxide and we see what we are going to get so we have already he has already rinsed this so in the burette we'll put the acid in the burette we'll put the acid So to wake him pack up then from there we are going to see 
The other one, we used methyl orange. Now this is a strong acid and a strong base. We can use any. So this one we're going to use phenolphthalein. So we change the indicator and we use phenolphthalein. That one is where this one. So we want to see now how we work now with phenolphthalein. Remember, you are promised, Amashimua, we can create a bomb. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, this is a laboratory. We can manufacture a bomb here, but not for destruction. <laughs> huh? Let's see what happens here. You've not taken lunch, man. I'm really. Mm -hmm. I need to eat more. I need to eat more ugali. Mm. Mm. Okay, now. Good. Then you release it. Mm. This is uh, hmm? I mean, it's 11 point, uh, five. 11 point? 5. 5. 6. So the initial reading 11 point 11 point 6. Point five five point six. 11 point 6. Uh -huh. so. Then two drops of phenolphthalein, uh, or three drops, one, two, three. So this time round, you can see we are starting from a pink color. So the first tighter, I'm a same. Uh, it was six. It's okay. Uh, 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 this is the volume. That is the final readings. This is initial readings. This is the volume used in centimeters cubic. Continue. Mm. No, I did not release it. So I release faster. Mm. So. so we start. First value changes because we did not release it. The first one changes. It changes to 12.567. Uh, 12.8. 12.8. 12 we did not release it, yes. Oh, fine. Let's move on. This is the first tighter we are doing. So we'll take another one so that we are consistent. So mostly the first, uh, the first item no normally is to know how you are going to move next, so that you are consistent. Yeah, sir. Oh. Final That's reading. Twenty-five. 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 Yes. Uh, social distancing. <laughs> Mm. 
25.0. So that gives me here there will be 2, 4, 8, 18. Is that correct? This yeah. is eh? this is 2. Oh, this is 2, yes. yes. This is 2. Mm -hmm. 12.2, correct. 12, so we can start with the same 12.2 as our initial. Don't release Cosato. We suck again. So this is our second tighter. Tighter number two. Or you can simply call it second tighter. This is the first tighter. These are the tighters. And therefore this is titration. And this is volumetric. Huh? Big name to scare you. But <laughs> little stuff. Okay, then the indicator, three drops. Okay. Then we release it. Shake. Drop by drop. Okay. So that's 37.1. You be careful as you read. 37.1. 37.10 if you if you want. The second decimal point we say it can be a 0 or a 5. So this is 11 minus 2. Uh, that is 9. And this is, uh, this is what? This is 6, 4. This is, uh, uh, we carried 1, 6, 4. And this is what? 2, 1, mm, 14. Meaning, we one. can't have values like this. What does Aaron tell us? It is important that we look at a third tighter. We have been very inaccurate in that case. Here we cannot differ. They can't differ by this much. In, a, in, in an exam, if you ever found this kind of a situation, that tells you you are wrong. You've made a mistake in one of the two. So we now see what happens with the third tighter. And this is why it is important, therefore, to avoid these mistakes. We are doing this one to show you some of the things that you do. But when you do this, it's an indication that you are wrong. So how do you avoid this? From the word go, when you are starting, you ensure that you lens your apparatus carefully and you run your solutions from the start, drop by drop. Let us now see what we do with this other one. That's 
So you be very careful class in rinsing your apparatus because it might affect your next practical. So some of these things we are not, we, we decided to do the second practical to let you know how you need to move on to be accurate because if you just do it you will find very big values, difference in values. So we, we are doing this also intentionally to explain to you such that when you find different values with, with uh, value with different variations then you see how to work it out so uh, our initial reading has changed Now the initial value, the graduation is 14.123, 14.3. Now you put three drops. So I've made a mistake. No, it's okay. No, this one. Then yeah? this one. Mm -hmm. this, this is, is nine. Two, this is two. Yes. So this is very big variation. Mm. Yeah. This is very big. So the, it, it can't be, it can't be like this. It can never be. So. 6.5. Sorry. There. Change. 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 So that's 26 point. 26 point? Point 0.6 26 point 0.6 let's see 26 point 0.6 so that is 0 3 2 12 so uh, so class in this case let us see which of these three which of these three is correct one of these values is not correct. In this case, you find that this your reading is almost double these other two. This tells you that this reading is inaccurate. It can never be. So when you are in an exam, you don't simply remove it. But when you are doing with your average, average, you deal with those values that are plus or minus 0 0.2 so you discard this and therefore you get 12.20 plus 12.30 this one you divide by 2 and this gives you 12.25 centimeters cubic now these are the values that we have let us see what happens now in an exam in an exam, what will the examiner do? Here you have your sodium hydroxide. You are combining it with sulfuric acid. Then this is going to give you sodium sulfate uh, plus water. Now in this area now, you put the state symbols and this is a soluble salt. The next thing you balance it up, two here, 
and therefore two there. Then you have your line. This is all what will happen. So here you have the pipette values and the pipette in this case was 25.0 centimeters cubic. Then this was the volume of the burette. This gives you the average 12.25 the value was it 12.25 what was it 12.25 correct now this is centimeters cubic then we have morality of your solution b and morality of your solution a now in this case what were we given we were given the morality of the acid and this is this. And this is two molar. The morality of the base, we don't know. So we put a question mark there. Then more ratio here is two. More ratio here is one. I mean, yes, one. So where do we go from there? We can use the formula that we have. MAVA over MBVB should give us. Remember, we, 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 we demonstrated how we got this class. So, MA here is very simple, is what we don't know. VB is 25. We are multiplying by, I mean, we are dividing by 2 molar times VB is 1, we should get uh, A is 1 over 2. Because what, uh, sorry, VB here, uh, the volume here is 25. Uh, morality here, this is MA, 25, this is 2 molar, volume here is 12.25. So, what do we get here? MA should be equal to 1 times 2 times 12.25. Then this other one, we are going to get 2 times 25. And therefore, this 2 goes, this is 12.25 divided by 25. And then, because I don't have the calculator, you can finish up that. You can finish up that, you put it in your calculator. Now, next in our course here is that you can be asked very many things by the examiner. The exercise remains the same. The examiner may choose not to give you the acid. So the examiner may tell you, you are reacting an a base. And this is solution P which is sodium hydroxide and whose molality is given. Say here 0 0.2 molar. And the volume you know from the pipette, I, I mean, from the pipette is 25. Then you've been given a diabetic acid. The acid could not be given. You are given this is an acid. Solution Q. We want, I just want to show you how the examiner will play around with your brains and confuse you. But it is very simple. I may choose not to give you the acid. So I tell you this acid is solution Q. Solution Q is prepared by giving us uh, from the acid. So I, this diabetic acid. So this is what you've been, a diabetic acid means that. So when you are reacting, when you are reacting that, what do you get? We are saying you have your sodium hydroxide. You are combining it with the diabetic acid to give you the results. 
And this one, the result should be uh, sodium. This tells you the charge of X, which is 2 plus water. Then you balance it up. How do you balance that? 2 here as the subscript under that. It's balanced. Uh, the equation is like that. All sodium salts are soluble. So I have now this. So the examiner want to get want you to get the LFM of the acid. Then get the mass of X. And then you get scared. In this case, it is very simple. Here you will get the MA VA over MB VB over A, A over B. Once you get so here what we have, we have the morality there, we have the volume there, we have the, uh, the morality here we don't have, but we can get that, we have that, we have that. So we get the morality of B, which is this. If we get the morality of this, given the mass or the volumes that were mixed, then we can get the LFM. And after we get the LFM, then we will get the mass of X. And that is how simple that one is. Now, from there, we now move on to what we, are, we call uh, redox titrations. Redox titrations. With redox titrations, this is simply a name to confuse you. This is combination of two words, reduction and oxidation. When we combine this, we get redox. So we get a strong oxidizing agent, a strong oxidizing agent. And we react it with another substance. And in this case, we'll get a salt plus other products, other products, depending with the oxidizing agent in question. So how do you go about this? Now, some of the oxidizing agents that we have, we can have potassium permanganate. We can have potassium dichromate and others. These are the common ones. Remember these ones are colored. So in, in the previous exercise that you have seen, Mwashimiwa metumia indicators to 40. Phenophthalene and methyl orange. In this case you will find these are colored. Unlike uh, in the case of the dichromate, where we can use diphenylamine indicator, in the case of the permanganate, we don't really use uh, uh, an indicator. Kwanini, indicators are used to tell us the end point. The two products have combined. So in this case, this is uh, purple. Some people uh, uh, like working it like that. So what will happen? So we will take an oxidizing agent, that one, which we have here. Then we will combine, and these oxidizing agents are normally acidified. So hydrogen ions plus, uh, we, in this case, we're going to use ammonium ferrous sulfate. We are going to, this is going to be oxidized to ion 3, then this one we are going to get water, and this one we are going to get manganese, two ions. Then the next thing is to have state symbols. Then we balance it up. Then we balance it up.
my equation is balanced. And what we are going to do, we are going, the exercise is the same class. Don't worry, don't be scared by this. This one, the examiner will call it solution Q. Like I have done. Uh, this one is solution P and Q. So we have a solution P and a solution Q. This is P. Now, don't even bother with the trying to know what they are. As long as you know, or the examiner will tell you what is going to be in the burette and what is going to be in the pipette. And remember, Mwashmiwa, remind them about this part. Remind them. Now, in this, when you have your burette, remember when you fill your burette, this lower part of the burette from the top is not filled. So you remember to release, at least to fill it, completely fill it, you release the top so that the burette is completely full. So let me just do it here, you see. The other time we were using uh, colorless fluids in the burette, so now we have a colored one. So when you release a little bit, you release, now it's full. So you can just release up to even that level, good. So it's now full. Then you close it firmly, not so tight, just firmly. Yes, so... Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you can now see why it is important to fill in this, so that your burette does not give you a confusion, and your readings should be as accurate. Then from there, we are going to have, this is uh, ammonium ferrous sulfate, which we are combining with, so you pipette, you pipette this solution. Mm-hmm. You prepare that solution. So note, we are having potassium permanganate in iron form. You are reacting it with ammonium. to oxidize iron 2 to iron 3 then water becomes a product and then there will be manganese uh, 2 so uh, we're going to have a similar thing here we are going to have a similar table Uh, this is the first titer, the second, and maybe the third, if, we, if our solutions allow. We can label them like that. Initial reading. Initial reading. Our initial reading is uh, 1.2. 1.2. Remember, if you're working together to confirm... This is final or reading in centimeters cubic. This is initial or readings in centimeters cubic. And this is the volume of the manganese used. So, Mr. it was ours. Uh, that's 1.2. 1.2 was our initial. 1.20. So we release. Yeah. 
So you can see what's happening in the reaction. Angalia tuchi, angalia tuchi. Ndeje, wacha ni hivi. Kwa kampa kama hivi. Hapa ni ndani ya. Do it. Now what we are doing with the moshimima is only for demonstration because you're supposed to do this one yourself. Ndeje. You can see it has not changed. You continue, you don't panic. That's uh, 37.5. At 7.3. Don't panic. Just that 7.3. Three. That gives me 0, 1. Uh, this is uh, 6. Eh? Yes. That is 36.0. Now, looking at this. 36.1. Huh? 36. If we make this one our initial. If we make this one our initial, then there will be a mistake. Because we can't have that 6 added here is 72. And our burette cannot be. So there is need, therefore, for you to refill. You refill your burette. So, uh, our initial, initial reading? Initial reading is 9.1234. 9 9.4. 9.4. 9.4. We have started with 9.4. Remember again where you are, uh, you are indicating. If you indicate these values in the long boxes, then that means inverted, an inverted table. And with an inverted table, inverted table means that uh, you will be wrong and you will not score. How are the markings done on such a question? One of them is consistency values. If your values are consistent, then you will get a C1. I mean, is your table complete? Do you have the decimals? Is your value interdem with your teacher's value? So already before we go to anything else, look at the distributions of the marks. Uh, uh, we are saying consistency in your values, completed table, decimals, and school value. Then there is another mark that we call the principle of averaging. So what we are doing here, we are dealing with a total of five marks. Under the five marks distributed like that, then this one, your teacher will always work out the values. If your school value, your teacher's value, and your values are within. If you have a single value on your table that is within, the, you score. If you have decimals and they are consistent and they are realistic values, you score. Is your table complete? Now, this is how simple it is for you to pass in an exam. For you to pass in an exam, it is not easy. Already this is, uh, uh, this, these are five marks. And five marks in chemistry practical. Five marks, we are saying, that is a lot of marks in 
any exam. So let us see what the machine uh, is doing here. Uh, the initial reading, Masema, confirm 9.9.4. 9.4 yes so now work out work so out to owner you keenly observe what changes in the reaction uh, if you are those people who give up hmm, that you are running too much solution then you lose it so you continue you continue and you are swaying. The, the reason why you sway is to make it mix and mixing uniformly. Like you can see, uh, our solution here is mixing uh, uniformly. Drop by drop now as you shake. Drop. Mm -hmm. Good. So that's nice. So, read for me. That's 45.6. 45? 45.6. 45.6. So, 45.6 zero. Consistency in the decimal points. So, this gives you zero. That gives you two. Or that gives you 36. So, do we have another solution for another one? Let's confirm. Refill, okay. refill, uh, refill, refill. We want to see whether we will be consistency. We are almost finishing class, so just be a little bit patient. That's okay. So a little patient, we are almost finishing. This lesson was a we had a very we have a very long one but we are almost done. Our students must pass exams. Ah they must. There. Our initial reading? Initial reading is zero point uh, one, two, three. Now we have realized that we are taking up to around 30 so you can run without shaking that mm -hmm. is what we are doing but you check here is if you look at that so then once you get closer to your values then you can start now placing it drop by drop. When it gets closer to around, you can see from the first one and second one, 
you can't go outside the 36. So you will be within the 36. So if you, you, you can now run it through all the way up to the, around 36 uh, there, you will be home and dry. Then you run it drop by drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like that. Okay. So that, that it has changed. What, what is the value? The that final is, reading. That is 6.7. That's 6 point? Point 0.7. Thirty-six point seven. Yes. And we said we you work you are working in pairs. When you are working in pairs, you confirm. Let me see. Correct. Mm. That six point seven. So you confirm. So that will be home and dry. So this gives you thirty six point two zero. Now looking at these values. This and this are within 0 0.1. This and this, they are the same. So in this situation now, for you to score this, for you to score this mark, then we are dealing with this. So how do you work out that? So for the average, you will say 36.10 plus 36.20 plus 36. 0.20. That one, you are dividing it by 3. This is, uh, 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 if you have a calculator, it will be 36 point what? Uh, 36 point what? Let me use That's my calculator. Let me use my phone. But work it out, uh, meanwhile. 0.15, eh? Huh? 36.15. Can it, it can't be 15. Is it? 6 point? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Uh, uh, that is, uh, this is 36.10 plus 36.20 plus 36.20 uh, divided by 3. 36 point, oh, fine. 36, and uh, very important. This is that 6.1666 recurring. Oh. Now, very important here, class, remember, when you get such a value from your calculations, which is very important, you cannot record it like this. You cannot record it like this because these values are from a buret. So you come here and give your, your answer to four significant figures. Now, what do I get here? This is 36.17. Now, what does this one mean? Now, this your, this your value, we, we could not have the second decimal point here being anything else other than a 5 or a 0. However, after working out here, we have got the average of the 3, by dividing by 3 here, and we got that 6.166 recurring. So how do we record? In this case, we are going to record that 6.17. And this is the volume. This is the volume you are going to use for our calculations. Now, <coughs> what does that one mean? Now, in this case, now we, I want to take you now back to the examiner. Here, we didn't balance our equation. We balance it now. Here, we have five. Uh, this is five. Five. This is eight. That is four. My equation is balanced. So, we now move on to the next step. The next step again now, we are saying that is manganese 4. We are combining it with acidified iron ferrous, I mean ammonium ferrous sulfate. And this one we will get, this one will be oxidized to iron 3 plus water plus uh, uh, plus what? plus manganese, manganese 2, 
We have said we now balance it up. This is 8, this is 5, this is 5, and that is 4. So we now put our line here. You don't have to worry. In these questions, the exercise is the same. Very simple. So this could be a solution A. This could be a solution B. Here we have discovered that this was always the volume here was 25 centimeters cubic from the pipette. This is the pipette. Here this is the average volume because this is the burette. And we have seen that the volume here was, 20, uh, was 30, 36. 0.17 centimeters cubic. This is your solution A. And the more ratio, so A here is 5. I mean, A is 1. A here, a B, is 5. So these two are combining in the more ratio, 1 is to 5. Then here we are dealing with morality of A and morality of B. Depending with the information given, depending with the information given here, we can work out here. For instance, the information that we were given by the examiner here is that this burette values were 0.02, 0 0.02. 0 0.02 mora. So simple exercise. Don't worry. It is MA VA over MB VB. And this gives you A over B. MA is 0. MA is this. 0 0.02. VA is 36. 0.17. Then MB. MB is what we are looking for. Times. VB is 25. Giving us A over B. 1 over 5. Cross multiplication tells us that we are going to get MB being equal to 0 0.02 times 36.17 times 5. All this divided by 25. That gives me the morality of that solution. Now take your time, 5 minutes, as I sip water. So, uh, and you will, uh, you will get an answer in that case. Very simple. So that we now move from here. We now see what we get. This is very simple from your calculator. Just feed your calculator and get that. Now, where are the questions in this case? Now, note uh, ammonium. Ammonium ferrosulfate ferrosulfate Remember this is the very complicated sort a very complicated sort of this So if the examiner gives you this then you would think that you will change uh, uh, here 0 0.14 0 0.14 molar so mark for yourself those who got that 0 0.14 molar now what are we saying examiner has given you that what are the likely questions of this if you see this then you'll be you, you get scared but there is nothing to get scared here about the examiner will tell you things of this nature one of the questions the examiner will give you, he will give you the sort. 
uh, ammonium ammonium sulfate iron sulfate now then the examiner refuses to give you that the examiner may choose not to give you n so how do you go about working out this you will told you will be told fine that an ammonium salt an ammonium salt ammonium salt an ammonium this an, uh, this is a double salt you can be called it's an ammonium salt reacts with potassium permanganate you be told it reacts in the ratio in the ratio uh, where it is the permanganate in the ratio is to the salt he will not tell you which salt is it now in this case uh, you have all this so you will know you will be given the ratio here 1 is to 5 so what does that one tell you that you have the permanganate is to the salt here this is your a this is your b your a is 1 your b is 5 so if you have the morality like i can give you some hypothetical values i can give you some hypothetical values here from your buret from your buret uh, i have values here 31.30 31.20 and 31.25 these are hypothetical values so the volume here the average is these three they are all within 0 0.2 so you divide them by three very simple stuff so in this case what do you get this case from my workings here I get 31.25 centimeters cubic that is the vo value I've been uh, I've been given then from here uh, from here what other information am I given here this is the volume the volume here is of course that one of a burette I mean pipette that is the pipette so from here i can do very many things here what other information do i have in this case morality here of b and this is 0 0.15 i have now that information so what i don't have uh, do i ha what do i have yes i have something close to that 0 0.5 so with this information it is very very possible for me here i have uh, i don't have uh, i don't have the morality here of a so m a v a over m b v b should give me a over b very simple so morality of a Morality of A, I don't have. Volume of A, I have. Morality of B, I have. Times 25. Then this is A over B. So in this case, what am I saying? I'm saying MA should be equal to 1 times 0 0.15 times 25 divided by 31.25 times 5. Once again, class, you can work it out. That value is easy for you 
once you get the morality of the sort, once you get the morality of the sort and you have everything else, then it is very, very possible for you to work out that. The other version of that same question is we have said once again, this is the formula of the sort. We say ammonium ferrous sulfate, which is a double sort, and also it is hydrated. One, this is a double sort. Double sort in the sense that it, is uh, it has two sorts in one. A crystal of this uh, sort has ammonium sulfate in it and iron 2 sulfate in it, and it is hydrated. Six water molecules. So you could be given that a double ammonium salt, ammonium salt, has the formula has the formula X sulfate. I mean, and six water molecules. That is the formula you've been given of the salt. So the examiner really doesn't care whether you know the salt or not. And again, you don't have to know the salt. So what does that one mean? That one means that you still have to do the same. You have your ammonium saw, it's combining with the permanganate. So you have your permanganate here and you have your salt. The same process. Here you have what is in the burette. You have what is in the pipette. The examiner will not fail to give you information. So you will get the information concerning the morality, concerning the volume. Uh, the volume. And this one you get, the volumes you get from the burette here. The volume is from the burette. Here you will get the morality. Here you will get the volume from the pipette. So these things work together. The volumes, one will be from the burette, the other one from the pipette. The moralities are what you will be given by the examiner. You will be given one of them. And when you are given one of them, and you are given the ratios, reacting ratios, which I am calling here A and B. The solution that you write to this side could be A, the what you write to that other side could be B. So here you will be you fill in what you do in an exam, just have your equation, have what is on the burette, have what is on the pipette, all the information on the solution that you have from the burette indicate it there. Then what we are saying, this formula will always work for you. This formula will work for you. And what you've been given here, what you, you, you indicate there, then you work out what you are missing by simply uh, uh, cross multiplication and so on and so forth. That is basically what you do in titration. And the other one that I wanted to, to mention is, once again, remember, we talked about sodium carbonate as I wind up. Reacting with HCl, so you are given a solid, and this solid could be, uh, let me use values that I have uh, worked out, uh, maybe 6.25 grams. You put this one, this solid, in a beaker. This is a beaker. So you put your solid here. Then you put, you are, you, you are given 100 centimeters cubic of 2 molar 
HCl. So a carbonate and an acid combines to give you a salt, water, and CO2. So how much of the acid do you have? Two moles in a thousand. What about a hundred? So this is zero point, uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, let me work it out, a hundred times two over a thousand. This gives me zero point two moles. So the moles you are having here are zero point two. So this acid, and here you've been given six point two five grams. So if we divide six point two five by the LFM, 106, uh, what do we get? We'll get the moles here. Let me, uh, what do you get, class? Uh, Moshimi, have you worked it out? 6.25, work out for me. 6.25. Divided by 106. 106, that's, uh, oh, 6.25 divided by 106. Mm -hmm. 3.91, yeah? 906. 3 point. Oh, 0 6.25. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. 6.25 divided by? 106. 106. 6.25 divided by 106. Okay. 0 0.0589. 0. 0.0589. 589. Yes. Oh, fine. So approximately 0 0.06 moles. Note that if I balance up this, I'll get so if I balance it up, if I balance it up, I'll get for every two moles here, I need one. So if I have 0 0.2, I need 0 0.4, meaning this is two, uh, this is. Uh, limited. This is a little. So this is in excess. That is in excess. That is what we are saying. So this in excess. In a practical, what will the, the examiner do? He will. He will not give you this. He will not give you this morality here. Because he wants you to find uh, the moles or the concentration of this solution. So how will he paraphrase that question? He will tell you now, you take this, you put it in a solution, and stir. So you will get a solution. Then this solution, he will tell you to fetch 100 centimeters cubic of this, or, or even 50, because it was 100 it tells you maybe 50 centimeters cubic of that. Then he will tell you to add water. So in other words, you dilute. You dilute to say 250 centimeters cubic. What does that one mean? The moles that are here in 50 are the ones that are in 50. Only that we've added water. We've taken here, this is uh, a certain number of moles here, and then we add water. The number of moles will not change. Then I take now this, which is diluted HCl, and then I combine with the sodium hydroxide to give me sodium chloride plus water. So if I now titrate this, this is burette, 25 centimeters cubic. Then this is 0 0.02 molar. Then I react with this. This one from the burette, this is from the burette, this is from the pipette. So if I take, like, say, 10.5 centimeters cubic, how will I work back? So I have titrated this with the diluted solution. 
So I'll work the moles of this. This is the formula. M A V A over M B V B A over B. So I'll know the concentration of this from this formula. That is the morality of this. Then what are if that is the morality of this solution, what about in 250? The moles uh, I'll get here, the moles I'll get here are the same moles that are in 50. These moles that are in 50 here, if I multiply by 2, I'll get the moles that are in 100. Such that now these moles will be less. And therefore, I can subtract. The moles I'll get here, I subtract from the initial moles. The initial moles were this one. Then I'll get the moles of HCl. And I can work back and see. So in other words, that is what we are referring once again, back titration. So the aspect of back titration, the aspect of back titration is not that you are working back in doing the practical, but back titration is the backness, the back in working from, from the front, working to the reverse, to where you started. So you do all this, then this is where you do the, the titrations, and then you work back. Where that is very, very simple. So class, in case you need any clarification, on what we've done. Maybe, uh, Moshimua, you could come uh, uh, close uh, so that uh, we have finished our lesson. In, in, uh, uh, if you need clarification on what we've done, uh, we'll give you our numbers. You can, uh, you can write an, a, a message and we will still get back to you. We have sent an assignment uh, to you which you should be rolling on your, uh, should be on your screens and then you work it out. So much more about Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gishui. Uh, to me, you are the best teacher ever. I really wanted to talk about this. Class, after making such a beautiful solution, please don't drink it. It looks like juice, but if you drink it, your stomach will, <laughs> will <laughs> burst. Yeah. So thank you very much. Today marks the end of our topic called the mole. And this topic has been perfectly handled by Mr. Gishui around 99%, I was just handling around 1% of the practical. So, Mr. Gishui, thank you very much for assisting our students, and you are the best. Actually, whatever has been done here, and class, please make sure you do revision on this. Make sure you do the assignment. This must come in examination. I'm, I'm giving you a leakage. This will be a leakage in exams. So, make sure you don't get scared when you are doing the practicals, and uh, may God bless all of you. Mwalimu uko juu kama upstairs za heaven. <laughs> uko you. top kabisa. So thank you very much guys. Nimejua watu wetu wenye wali tune in mmefurahia with the lesson. Any other issue being discussed is an an issue. We pray to the almighty God so that everything goes on well. Thank you. God bless you all. Asanteni sana. Mungu wabariki. Tibe. Tia lala. So, on Facebook, that's uh, Instagram. Instagram, Farel Nyadera, as a teacher of chemistry from uh, Kabatonjo School, I can say without fear of contradiction that Mwesh has done a wonderful job. Congrats. Uh, Nebulas, Mwalimu Babu, na Mwalimu Gishui, Mkotop, Mohit, Makadia, the mall concept covered perfectly well. Ko uh, Ko Kondir Luther. Babu cares for our students. This is wonderful. So many comments. This is very beautiful. Njeriwa Kahiga. I know this lady very hardworking and also very beautiful. May God bless you and give you a favor in everything you do, Mwashimiwa. Asante sana, Jerry. Pal, mambo ikosawa. Ningependa ata babu anioe bibi wapili. Ay! Hii intamalizwa. Hii intamalizwa kwa nyumba. But thank you for that. Ndakupatia ndugu yangu. 
Mohitma Makadia, yes, we revised CAM this evening, the mall concept. This is wonderful. On Facebook, very fast, let me just check some of the few comments. On Facebook, uh, we have Dennis Madeka, Babu, you are the best. Uh, Colin Sondira again. Hey, kweni ulikuwa classes ngapi bwana? Hii ndio kuiba mtiani. Uh, babu, this is wonderful. Hii ni sawa kabisa. Picha clear, nasema babu, ako juu. Uh, Moses Maina Kigano. This is one wonderful guy who's been promoting our education also with the with the uh, he has he has a company that is doing um, uh, sales on mobiles and mobile covers. So you can promote him on uh, the gadgets. It's called the slim slick gadgets. Slick gadgets. Abed Las Babowino, you are the best. Mungina uh, mesema apa quick recovery DJ Evolve. Let's pray for DJ Evolve. The Almighty God will help him and he will heal in Jesus' name. For those who are agents of Satan, we'll continue fighting. So, thank you for that comment, my guy. That is Odoyo Munga Sr. Uh, we have uh, Dio Diof continue with a good job. Said Donald, this is proper. I love it. Uh, Korir Nelson. Mweshi, this is great. Do not fear any intimidation. You are helping our children. Nobody should intimidate you. Mtu anasema ni mpati helmet yangu. Lakini hiyo helmet ni taku donetia. Just send your, send nini inbox. Ni kupati hii helmet. Ibrahim Kainga, students were advised. Well, Sobe, anasema mambo iko sawa kabisa. Sobe Duke, babu you are the best. Kelvin Obunga, keep up the good job. Smallin Steve Babu mimi ningekuwa na dota wangu ningekupatia. Hi, that is wonderful. So YouTube On YouTube we have uh, Swale Hassan, this is a great job. Mr. Gishui has done the best. Simon Nyangara, good job mwalimu, we love your class. Keep it up. Uh, Dennis Mwema, good job prof. Given my number and Say hi to Mr. Gishui, was my teacher at Alliance High School. He's made me be a doctor now. Wow, mwalimu unasikia hii mambo hiko. Mimi nae, nimesoma hizi vitu kwa library, naona mimi naeza tengeneza bomb sasa. Na hiyo bomb, itakuwa for future, inashida. Itakuwa bomb ya love. So, Glen Bay, mambo hiko sawa, kazi hiko sawa. Abdiaziz Ahmed Tibim. Babu, we love you, Scott. Scott, Babu, we love you. Uh, Julius eh, Mangwana, uh, this, is a, this is a true leader taking care of future generations. Love you lots, Moshimiwa. God bless you. Uh, uh, Ken Mijungu, Babu, niliona, uh, uh, nimepoteza kazi juu yako, but nisamee tafadhali. Nimekusamee ndugu yangu, I love you so much. Uh, this is great. Oh, another guy from NTV. To some men, sisi kama NTV atukujua. Asante ni sana. I don't want to read all. But God bless you. Na tuseme ni tibim. Asante ni sana.